In our documentary, TON 618, The Monster Black Hole That Defies Physics, we introduced you to the cosmic giant, TON 618. Since then, the comments and even our inbox have been full of one big question. Wait, isn't Phoenix even bigger? So today, by popular demand, we're tackling that debate. Why the black hole we've actually measured, TON 618, still takes the crown over the much-hyped Phoenix A. Here's the spoiler. It's not about headlines, it's about how astronomers weigh black holes. Of course, black holes don't come with bathroom scales. Instead, astronomers use what's called the virial method. They look at a fast-moving ring of hot gas, just light days from the black hole. The faster that gas moves, the stronger the gravity holding it in place. And from that, we can work out the mass. Think of it like timing a skater's spin to figure out how much weight is being pulled around. Now, because these regions are tiny and too far away to see directly, astronomers calibrate them using closer quasars and then scale by their brightness. It's a method that's been tested and refined for over 30 years. Using this approach, a 2004 study gave TON 618 a mass of about 66 billion suns. A more recent update in 2022 put it at around 41 billion suns. Either way, TON 618 is still well above every other black hole we've actually measured. That's why NASA still lists it at over 60 billion, because both results fit within the same range. And here's the key. Those numbers come from gas we can actually see moving under TON 618's own gravity. That's about as close as you can get to putting a black hole on the scales. Phoenix A, on the other hand, sits 5.8 billion light years away at the center of the Phoenix cluster. The famous 100 billion solar mass claim comes from a very different method called core Serzik light deficit modeling. In short, astronomers look at how many stars are missing from the galaxy's center, assume those stars were thrown out by a pair of black holes merging, and then work backwards to guess how massive the central black hole must be. Do the maths with Phoenix A's core, and you get roughly 100 billion suns. There's also the argument that Phoenix A could have grown huge thanks to all the gas pouring into the cluster over time. But again, that's speculation, not a direct measurement. Here's the catch. Resolution. Even with the James Webb Space Telescope, we can't zoom in enough to see the gas clouds moving inside Phoenix A's sphere of influence. That's the zone where its gravity dominates nearby stars. And without those orbits, the virial method simply can't be used. In fact, some other studies point towards much smaller numbers. Back in 2019, Chandra X-ray data suggested about 5.8 billion suns, based on the energy needed to blow giant bubbles in the cluster's hot gas. Then in 2025, James Webb observations in the mid-infrared gave a figure of around 10 billion suns, combining dust temperatures with gas movements. Both results are still rough, with big uncertainties. But they're nowhere near the 100 billion claim, and they show just how much depends on the modelling. So where does that leave us? Phoenix A might turn out to be a true heavyweight, but until we can actually measure the gas under its gravity, its mass is still more of an educated guess than a hard number. TON 618, on the other hand, is different. It remains the biggest black hole we've actually weighed. Even at the lower recalibrated figure, it towers over the next confirmed rival, and every part of that estimate comes from direct evidence of gas moving in its grip. So, what do you think? Between these cosmic heavyweights, where would you cast your vote? Let us know in the comments. And if this quick breakdown has scratched your black hole itch, give the video a like, subscribe, 
and tap the bell so you won't miss the next episode, where we'll be diving into the mysteries of dark matter. Until then, stay curious and clear skies.